Hi guys! Welcome to another episode of Attorney Job Logger, Law for the Everyday Layman. Today we take a part 8 on the law of sales and we'll be talking about the obligations of the vendee or the buyer. Now if you like my videos and you want to see more, please hit the subscribe button. Also, please remember that this is only for educational purposes and is not a substitute for proper legal advice or for studying and understanding the law. Okay? So what are the obligations of the buyer? The very first one is to accept delivery of the thing. Okay? Second is to pay the price in legal tender or in case another mode has been agreed upon, then to pay that agreed upon mode. Remember that the obligation of the buyer is to pay a price certain in money or its equivalent. In case the equivalent has been agreed upon, then that must be paid. Okay? Now, third obligation of the buyer in case the goods are delivered to the buyer and the buyer has a right to refuse the, to accept the goods and he refuses to accept the goods, then he has the following obligations. First, he has to notify the seller of his refusal to accept. Okay. Second, he must take care of the goods because now he is a bailey. He holds the goods on behalf of the seller. Okay, and but while he holds the goods and he has to take care of them, he has no obligation to return the goods. Okay, it is up to the seller to get them back. And the third obligation under this uh, obligation is to be liable as a depository in case he constituted himself voluntarily as a depository. To learn more about deposit, please just watch my episode on that uh, matter. No? Now, let's go to the fourth obligation of the buyer. Okay, he, The buyer is bound to pay interest for the period between delivery and the period of payment. Okay, Only in the following cases. First, if it is stipulated. Okay, Second, in case the thing produces fruits or income. And third, in case the buyer is in default, okay? If, uh, of course, if he's in default, no, he uh, has failed to perform his obligation on time. And uh, if you want to learn more on default, please just uh, watch my episode on the matter, no? But in case of default, the buyer or the debtor shall be liable for interest from the time of extrajudicial or judicial demand, okay? So those are the obligations of the buyer. Now please take note of the following rules, okay? First, no, the seller is not required to deliver until the price has been paid, okay? Just remember that in case of a sale that is not subject to any condition, then there is a reciprocal obligation on the part of both of the parties. There is only delay in case one of the parties is able to perform and the other is not yet able to perform, okay? In line with that rule that I just mentioned that the seller is not required to deliver until the price has been paid, the buyer, on the other hand, is not required to pay the price before delivery. Of course, from this case, is accepted the situation where there is a stipulation to the contrary, okay? Second rule, okay? If there is a stipulation as to the time and place of uh, payment, then the buyer is bound to accept delivery and pay the price at the stipulated time and place of payment and delivery. Okay? Third, if there is no stipulation as to time and the place, then the buyer is bound to accept at the actual time and place that the thing is being delivered. Okay? Fourth, if there is no stipulation as to the place of delivery, then it should be delivered wherever the thing may be found at the perfection of the contract. Okay? And the fifth rule, if only the time of delivery has been stipulated or fixed, then the buyer must pay even before delivery. Okay? But if only time of payment was fixed, then the buyer is entitled to delivery even before he pays the price, okay? So, uh, I mentioned earlier that the first obligation of the buyer is to accept delivery. And when we talk about acceptance, this is the buyer's assent, 
okay, or agreement, no, or consent to become the owner of specific goods when delivery is offered by the seller, okay? Now, acceptance is different from delivery. Please take note, ha? Huh? Because acceptance is an obligation of the buyer, while delivery is the obligation of the seller, okay? Acceptance is not a condition for the act of delivery, meaning that uh, the buyer has nothing to do with delivery at all, okay? The buyer's only obligation is to accept, okay? And the seller must comply with his obligation to deliver even if there is no acceptance yet, okay? Now, acceptance is also different from actual receipt, okay? There may be actual receipt without acceptance as when acceptance precedes delivery or comes before delivery, no? Because acceptance implies approval of the contract while uh, actual receipt is the physical act of taking or receiving the goods, okay? So again, the buyer may have accepted but he does not possess the goods yet. Okay? Now, what are the ways of uh, accepting, no? The acceptance can be expressed, no? Orally or written. And acceptance may be implied. And when do we know that acceptance is implied? First, if the buyer performs acts of ownership. Okay? Like for example, when uh, you buy a bottle of Coke at the Sari Sari store, you, uh, when you drink from that bottle of Coke, you are implied to have accepted the sale, no? the delivery of the bottle of Coke because you have performed an act of ownership which is consuming the drink, okay? And uh, acceptance may also be implied in the second case where the buyer fails to return the goods after a reasonable lapse of time, okay? Or at the lapse of a reasonable time. Okay? Now, in case of acceptance, the following are the rights of the buyer. Okay? First, the right, it is the right of the buyer to receive complete delivery. In other words, the buyer is not bound to accept delivery in installments. Of course, unless it has been otherwise agreed upon. Okay? But as a general rule, delivery must be complete. Okay? Second right. The buyer ha must be given a reasonable opportunity to examine the goods in order to determine if the goods are in conformity with the contract. Okay? Exceptions. First, of course, if there is a stipulation. And second, in case of sales which are collect on delivery. In which case, the buyer is not entitled to examine until payment is made. The exceptions to COD again are in case of course stipulation and usage of trade. Okay? Third right of the buyer, no? The acceptance by the buyer of goods will not discharge the seller from liability for any breach of promise or warranty. Okay? Just because the buyer has accepted the goods does not mean that the seller will no longer be liable for breach of uh, warranty. Okay? However, th there is a requirement on the part of the buyer. He must give the seller notice of the breach within a reasonable time from knowing or the time that he ought to know of the breach. If he does not give such notice within a reasonable time, then the seller will not be liable for breach of warranty. Okay? Fourth right of the buyer, no? The buyer can reject the delivery of a wrong quantity of goods, meaning that it's not uh, the quantity stated in the agreement, or the buyer can reject goods of different description, okay? He can also, whether those uh, goods of different description are uh, solo or if they are mixed with goods of different description, no? Okay? Now, uh, in this case, this is also similar to what I mentioned earlier that the buyer will not be bound to return and it is sufficient if he merely gives notice of his refusal to accept, okay? But in any case where the buyer refuses to accept the goods without just cause, huh? if he does not have just cause or he has no right to refuse the goods, then the title to the goods will pass automatically to the buyer 
from the moment the goods are placed at his disposal okay the only time that that rule will not apply is if the ownership was reserved by the seller okay as to the second obligation of the buyer of payment just remember it has to be in legal tender okay for uh, more discussion on legal tender please just watch my video on uh, payment under extinguishment of obligations okay well, however uh, just remember when it comes to payment that uh, failure to pay it does not affect the existence of the contract why because payment is not an element of the contract so it does not affect the existence of the contract of sale actually payment goes into the consummation stage and since it goes into the consummation stage failure to pay is a mere breach which gives rise to the remedy of either specific performance or recession on the part of the seller with damages in either case okay but what i want to talk to you about now when it comes to payment is the right of the buyer well the rights so are there too but i want to talk first about the right of the buyer to suspend payments okay now for, before I begin, no, the right to, of the buyer to suspend payments contemplates a contract which has not yet been consummated. Because if the buyer has fully paid the price and he already has the goods, then there is nothing to suspend. Okay? There is nothing to suspend. He has the goods and the price is already with the seller. So, there's, this uh, rule will not apply. Okay? So, when does uh, the suspension of payments rule apply? Okay? First, in case the buyer is disturbed in his possession or ownership of the thing okay similar to the rule in a warranty against eviction the disturbance here is not a mere trespass it has to be a disturbance in law okay and the second ground when the suspension of payments may be availed of is if the buyer has a reasonable grounds to fear that his possession or ownership will be disturbed okay either through a vindicatory action or foreclosure when we say vindicatory action that's an action to recover ownership or possession you learn more about that in the law on property okay but uh, foreclosure is simply the remedy of the mortgagee in case he wants to uh, uh, foreclose now foreclose the contract of mortgage or pledge or any other accessory contract of security of a principal obligation to learn more about that please just watch my uh, security and credit transactions series okay now whether it be in the first case that i mentioned or the second case the buyer can only retain that part of the price which he has not yet paid okay in other words if he has already paid part of the price he cannot recover that anymore Okay? Because the rule again is suspension of payments, not recovery of payments. Okay? He can only stop paying. And if uh, he can, he can only do that if there is still some of the price that is left. So that he can stop paying the remainder in the two cases that I have mentioned. Okay? So what are the cases where suspension of payment is not available? Okay? We have first, no, if the seller gives security for the return of the price. Okay? Second, wait, wait, wait. for the first, of course, since there's security, then uh, the buyer has something to proceed against instead of uh, relying on his right to suspend payments no because the security will now answer for the um, breach by the seller okay second case where uh, suspension of payments is not available in case there is a stipulation that the buyer must make payment notwithstanding the disturbance of his possession okay third case if the seller caused the disturbance to cease, okay, he was able to stop the disturbance of the uh, peaceful possession or ownership of the buyer, okay? Four, suspens suspension of payments is not applicable in case of a mere act of trespass. And finally, there is no suspension of payments if the buyer has paid the price in full because there is no more, no longer anything to suspend, okay? The price has been fully paid, okay? The right to uh, 
please just remember no the right to suspend payments will only exist or only exists while the disturbance or danger lasts no in other words once the seller has caused the disturbance or danger to cease or to stop then the buyer must now continue to pay okay the buyer can only suspend payment or not pay while he is being disturbed in his possession or ownership once that disturbance ceases or stops then he must continue paying okay let's give an example no so let's say x sells a car to y for uh, 100,000 pesos y pays a down payment of 40,000 pesos and the balance to be paid in six equal installments okay now, after Y paid the first installment, here comes Z, another person, no? Z files a case against X claiming that he is a co-owner of the car, okay? So when X now goes to Y to ask for payment of the second installment, Y refuses, saying, I'm being disturbed in my possession. That third person, Z, is claiming that he is a co-owner. So now my possession and ownership is being disturbed, okay? So later, X and Z arrive at a compromise by which uh, the case against X by Z is dismissed. Okay? There is now a compromise agreement. Okay? So now, because of the compromise agreement, X goes after Y and sues him for the balance. Okay? Is uh, Y liable? Uh, so yeah, I'll give you some time to think. The answer is yes. Y is liable. Okay? Why is liable? Why? Okay? First, no? While initially... Y was justified in suspending payment, no? Because of the disturbance caused by Z. Z was claiming co-ownership, so he was disturbing Y in his possession. So at the start, no, of Z's uh, interference, Y was justified in suspending payments to X, okay? So that was a correct use of suspension of payments. However, Y is liable now because X was able to uh, cause the disturbance to cease. How? Through the compromise agreement through which the case for co-ownership was dismissed, okay? Because X was able to make the disturbance cease, that is the moment that Y starts to become liable again. And now, he has to pay, okay? He may even be liable for interest from the time of the judicial demand since X uh, filed the case in court, no? To sue Y. Okay? So that's the application of the rule on suspension of payments. Okay? So now let's go to the second right of the buyer when it comes to payment. No? In case of immovable property or real property, the buyer has the right to pay even after the expiration of the period agreed upon as long as no demand for rescission has yet been made. Even though, no, even though there is a stipulation that the contract will be automatically rescinded on the failure to pay at the agreed upon time. Okay, so again, this is uh, 1592, no? Uh, in case of real property or immovable property, the buyer can pay for, uh, can pay the price, can continue paying the price, even after the expiration of the period to pay, as long as there has been no demand for recession yet, whether uh, notarial or not. Okay, so uh, that's it for the obligations of the buyer. I hope you may have picked up a thing or two and I hope to see you for my next video. Okay, see you soon. Bye.